Local weather expert, Chief Meteorologist Chris Franklin. And what's been incredible, really going back to last week before Adalia really developed into anything, it was still just a wave. Models have been very consistent, calling for somewhere in western Florida, whether or not it was the panhandle or down toward Tampa. That is a pretty darn good forecast, and considering it is still basically within that area, still a very good forecast. Of course, intensity forecast, a different matter. We also mentioned Franklin. It did become our first major hurricane of the Atlantic season, which will thankfully stay between the U.S. East Coast and Bermuda as it eventually will move out over open water. So not really a direct threat to land. Of course, higher surf along the East Coast and for Bermuda, as eventually Adalia will do as it moves off of the Florida coast. Here's what's happening right now with the storm. This is the four o'clock advisory, just barely below hurricane status before it has even gotten into officially the Gulf of Mexico, still sitting right near the Yucatan Channel. So it is still in the Caribbean with that thunderstorm development continuing to pulsate right at the center of the storm. Now the forecast now what I'm showing you here is also wind speed. That's usually when the center line becomes a little bit more important, not necessarily for the impacts, which are going to be felt well outside of even the cone, but for those hurricane force winds. If it were to move more toward the Big Bend, this is a fairly a fairly unpopulated part of the state. So if there's any good news, it looks like very few people would actually experience the worst of those possibly category three force winds as we head into Wednesday. As I mentioned, it will continue out over Georgia and South Carolina before moving into the Atlantic Basin. Elsewhere, we'll see what it's going to do.